It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. It's time for us to have another Wednesday conversation about the stable framework. So today, I wanted to keep this short and sweet. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, who maybe haven't heard over the past several weeks on Wednesday, I've been dedicating the podcast episode to the stable framework. So I thought it'd be good just to give you a quick overview of what it was and um, why it exists. So the whole concept of the stable framework is uh, how to achieve operational excellence in operations, implementation, DevOps, development, and beyond. It is. Uh, it was invented by Michael Berry, uh, a dear friend of mine, who does a fantastic job of explaining it. When he says every organization everywhere is trying to achieve operational excellence, whether they have the vocabulary for it or not, operational excellence is delivering exactly what your customers need, reflectiveness, with minimum byproduct efficiency. The agile mindset helps organizations achieve the first goal. The stable mindset helps organizations achieve the second. Agile is about close customer feedback, short feedback loops, prioritizing value, and planning at multiple levels to support quick changes when necessary. Stable is about removing human failure from the execution process. A typical IT organization wastes about 35% of its work efforts redoing work that wasn't done correctly the first time. Some groups report 50% or as much as 80% rework. Uh, 80% of their efforts are attributed to what's called the hidden factory. When expressed as a dollar amount, the effects are just alarming. So the stable, uh, the stable framework was designed to combat this problem. It's a combination of the latest agile and lean techniques and provides a simple and robust quality management system in a box, if you will. Heavy emphasis is placed on customer and supplier relationships and Kaizen-based continuous improvement. Altogether, these tools provide organizations with the transparency and conscientious, uh, consci- conscientiousness needed to execute the right steps the right way every time. Stable can be used to complement a Scrum development team, or it can be implemented as a complete substitute to Scrum. In addition to development, Stable is applicable in operations, implementation, DevOps, or any other work that contains repeatable process steps. Most recently, I heard a discussion about Stable being applied in an onboarding environment for a, uh, for a teams and systems group, so uh, for a people management. Uh, and I thought that was kind of cool, right? Cool implementation of how Stable can be flexed. The stable framework is comprised of a process asset library, two roles, the master chief and a process owner, uh, three domains, the past domain, the present domain, and the future domain, and four core meetings with a repeating time box and five quality principles. Taken together, they form a tool set enabling IT groups to perform six process improvement fundamentals. All of these are uh, summarized in the stable framework. So quickly, the one library is the process asset library, and that's the central repository for storing institutional knowledge in the form of process and asset control information about services offered. Often it's called a configuration management system. Your process asset library uh, is your link to the future. It contains a service register listing primary services offered, services in a development, retired services, and supplier services, each service is in a service register is linked to process steps, uh, standard operating procedures, CADA card checklist, recovery models, and lessons learned. A process asset matrix can be used to link processes and asset details to each of the listed services. The two roles as discussed were the master chief and a process owner, and we've covered those in previous designations, so I don't know we need to go into too much detail there. So, uh... The three, the three domains are the past domain, the future domain, and the present domain, and those all feed to the performance console, allowing you to gather information. The four core meetings are your sprint or cycle planning meeting, which is very similar to Scrum, the sprint planning meeting. The daily Kaizen stand-up, which is very similar to a daily stand-up for a meeting. 
the sprint or cycle review meeting, which is also very similar to what we see in Scrum or Agile, the sprint or cycle retrospective meeting, which is also very similar to what we see in Agile, and then uh, finally, they have a, a Kappa meeting, which is a change control meeting. And uh, that meeting, the Kappa committee, uh, should happen at least once a cycle. And this is where you get all of the information and uh, operations development and the support desk roles all attend. So that way you can go through items and make sure that you have uh, everything that you need in order for you to successfully operate and do a support desk and all that good stuff. So um, another meeting that's not mentioned is a quarterly business review meeting. And this is more of uh, more of how we organizationally plan things at the release level or at a quarterly roadmap plan level, uh, as well as a change control committee meeting if necessary. And of course, they have the five principles of quality. Uh, I'm just going to call those out. Anything repeatable can be improved. Improvement requires repetition, reflection, and change. The uh, sustained improvement requires systemization. Systemization. Oh boy, that is always a word that gets me. Systematization. There we go. Systematization. Uh, principle number four is improve systems and respect people. Principle number five is speak using data. And uh, I think if you follow those five, you're going to be fine. And then that leads to the six forms of process improvement, which includes systematization, measures, flow, lean, resilience, and durability. There you have it. So all kinds of good stuff that you can do in order to help push things along. And a stable framework is just another tool in your toolkit that's going to help you get there. What I can tell you with assurance is every organization I've seen that has applied stable principles and practices has really had a successful flow because they're eliminating things from a hidden factory and they're seeing things flow right away. So if you want to learn more about stable, make sure you reach out to me and uh, I'd love to share with you as a stable trainer some of the things that I know. And if I don't know, I know who does know the creator of stable Mike Berry. So between the two of us, we can certainly get you to a place where you can really gain a better understanding of how stable can impact your organization. That's going to do it for today. If you have a topic you want us to cover, remember to reach out to us, learn more at agiledad.com. We'd love to hear about your topic. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. Yeah.